In the late stages of 1944, as a consequence of their defeat in the Continuation War, the Finns entered into a treaty with the Soviet Union. The terms of this agreement stipulated that hostilities would cease between the two nations on the condition that Finland expel its former German allies from its territory. This particular episode of conflict, which unfolded in the wilderness of Lapland, became known as the Lapland War. However, the German forces, stung by the Finns' decision to comply with the treaty, sought retribution and retaliated against their former partners. Amidst this tumultuous backdrop, Otami Korpi, a retired commando and seasoned prospector, lived a solitary existence in the secluded Lapland wilderness, accompanied only by his loyal horse and faithful dog. Engrossed in his quest for gold, Otami spent his days meticulously panning and mining, largely indifferent to the battles raging in the distance. Unbeknownst to him, his laborious efforts led him to stumble upon a bountiful gold deposit, yielding an impressive collection of gleaming nuggets. Filled with anticipation, Otami gathered his newfound wealth, mounted his horse, and embarked on a journey towards the nearest town, his trusty dog faithfully following in tow. However, fate had a treacherous encounter in store for Otami along his path. He unexpectedly crossed paths with a formidable Wehrmacht platoon comprising 30 soldiers, led by the merciless SS Obersturm for a Bruno Heldorf and his subordinate, Wolf. As the retreating German troops wreaked havoc on settlements, they callously took several Finnish women captive. Otami's unassuming presence initially sparked little interest in Heldorf, who allowed him to pass unimpeded. Yet, Otami's luck took a harrowing turn when he encountered a second group of soldiers. Discovering his saddlebags brimming with the coveted gold, these soldiers, driven by greed, swiftly devised a plan to execute both Otami and his loyal dog. But Otami, equipped with a resolute determination to survive, unleashed a swift and lethal counterattack, eliminating the entire group of assailants. The sound of gunshots echoed through the wilderness, catching the attention of Bruno, who hastened to investigate the source of the commotion. To his astonishment, he stumbled upon the grim aftermath, witnessing the carnage left in Otami's wake. Amidst the chaos, Bruno's discerning eye fell upon one of Otami's precious gold nuggets, clutched by a dying soldier, revealing the immense value that had triggered the bloodshed. In a relentless pursuit, Bruno and his tank relentlessly chase Otami, eventually cornering him at the edge of a treacherous minefield. Tragically, Otami's faithful horse falls victim to a hidden landmine, losing its life in the process. Determined to escape, Otami seizes his precious gold and strategically triggers another mine, intentionally causing an explosion to create a diversion. The soldiers sent after him, unaware of the deadly traps lurking beneath the soil, quickly succumb to the perilous minefield's devastating toll. Sensing the urgency of their mission, Bruno orders two of the captive women to forge ahead and ensure a safe path. Among them, Aino selflessly volunteers to take the place of one of the women, fearlessly leading the way. While examining Otami's dog tag, Bruno uncovers a poignant revelation about his elusive adversary. Otami, once a Finnish commando who had experienced immense loss during the Winter War while fighting against the Red Army, had tragically lost his family and home. Driven by a deep-seated thirst for vengeance and left with nothing to lose, Atami transformed into a legendary figure known as Kashe, the Immortal, a relentless force of destruction responsible for the demise of countless communist troops. Despite the ominous warning contained within Atami's past, Bruno stubbornly defies orders to turn back and persists in his relentless pursuit. Wounded and depleted, Atami is abruptly roused from his weary respite by the advancing platoon. With the soldier's keen canine companions hot on his trail, Atami resorts to a daring tactic. He clings beneath one of the German vehicles, deliberately puncturing its fuel tank, causing gasoline to cascade and shroud him, effectively masking his scent from the hounds. As the platoon halts to investigate the leak, Otami seizes the opportune moment and escapes, holding the ferocious dogs at bay by igniting himself in a blaze of fire before plunging into a nearby lake. Patiently awaiting his resurfacing, Bruno commands his soldiers to enter the frigid waters, unaware of the imminent danger lurking below. With chilling precision, Otami silently dispatches the soldiers underwater, methodically slitting their throats while replenishing his own oxygen supply with the escaping air from their necks. Otami successfully reaches the opposite shore of the lake, but to Bruno's dismay, he discovers Otami's dog, a lingering reminder of the relentless pursuit that persists. As Otami ventures into the desolate town, a scene of utter devastation unfolds before his eyes, the once vibrant settlement reduced to smoldering ruins by the destructive forces of the retreating German troops. Seeking refuge amidst the chaos, 
He takes shelter within a petrol station, hoping to find temporary respite from the relentless pursuit. Unbeknownst to Otami, Bruno, ever relentless in his pursuit, devises a sinister plan to ensnare him. Sending Otami's loyal dog with a lit dynamite stick attached to his collar, Bruno intends to unleash a lethal explosion that would eliminate his adversary once and for all. However, Otami's unwavering bond with his faithful companion compels him to act swiftly, saving the dog from certain doom but falling victim to the blast himself. The force of the explosion subdues Otami, leaving him battered and disoriented. Seizing the opportunity, Bruno, accompanied by Wolf and tank driver Schutze, seizes Otami's unconscious body. Callously disregarding his life, they hang him from the petrol station's signpost, stripping him of his gold and leaving him to a fate they believe to be sealed. Yet, against all odds, Otami's indomitable spirit and sheer determination prevail. By fortuitous circumstance, his wounds find purchase on protruding rebar, allowing him to escape the clutches of the noose. Although unconscious, he remains suspended from the rope, his life hanging by a precarious thread. In a surprising turn of events, a pair of German pilots descends upon the scene, desperately in search of fuel to sustain their aircraft. The wind generated by their plane's landing causes the petrol station's sign to loosen, and Otami's limp form plummets to the ground. Miraculously, the eagle-eyed engineer within the aircraft detects faint signs of life within Otami's battered body. Recognizing a potential opportunity, the pilot issues an order for Otami and his loyal dog to be eliminated. However, fueled by a fierce determination to survive, Otami musters his remaining strength, eliminating the engineer and rendering the pilot unconscious. In a parallel narrative, Bruno harbors ambitions of evading the repercussions of Germany's impending defeat. He envisions using the stolen gold to secure his escape alongside Wolf and Schutze. Through clandestine arrangements, he ensures the presence of a pilot who would fly them to safety while the rest of the platoon proceeds towards Norway. Unbeknownst to Bruno, Atami seizes an opportunity to turn the tables on his pursuit forcing the surviving pilot to fly him towards the platoon. Otami emerges as an unexpected and formidable threat. As the platoon marches forward, their path is abruptly obstructed by the wreckage of a crashed airplane. The pilot, ensnared by the very noose Wolf had intended for Otami, dangles lifelessly as a grim reminder of the merciless pursuit. Sensing an opportunity to strike, Otami leaps onto Bruno's tank, his vengeance personified. Simultaneously, armed with newfound resolve, Aino and the other captive women seize control of one of the trucks, rallying behind Otami. Together, they embark on a daring offensive, unleashing a barrage of firepower upon the remaining soldiers within the second truck, effectively neutralizing the threat. With the balance of power shifted and their ranks decimated, Otami, Aino, and their valiant companions stand poised to confront Bruno and his dwindling forces, ensuring that their long-awaited retribution draws ever closer. In a climactic showdown, Atami, fueled by a mix of vengeance and survival instinct, overpowers Wolf, extracting brutal retribution upon his former tormentor. Leaving Wolf at the mercy of the vengeful women, Atami redirects his focus towards Bruno, who heartlessly ends Schutze's life before making his escape with the pilot. With unwavering determination, Atami takes aim at the plane, firing his weapon and gravely injuring the pilot. Seizing a pivotal moment, he employs his trusty pickaxe as a makeshift tool, hacking his way onboard the airborne aircraft. Engaged in a fierce and desperate struggle, Atami and Bruno clash in a brutal bout of hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, Bruno gains the upper hand, savagely beating Atami with a static line, temporarily subduing him. As Bruno prepares to deliver a final blow, Atami, fueled by sheer willpower, acts swiftly. In a daring move, he hooks the static line to a bomb, releasing it through the bomb bay door hurtling Bruno to his demise. With the pilot also meeting a fatal end, Atami, battered but resolute, secures himself in the cockpit as the doomed plane hurtles towards an inevitable crash in a vast swamp below. Meanwhile, guided by Eno's determined leadership, the captive women deliver Wolf and the German tank to an astonished Finnish unit. In an astonishing turn of events, their captor now lies at their mercy, their liberation complete. Miraculously surviving the plane's catastrophic crash, Atami emerges from the treacherous swamp, reunited with his loyal dog, a testament to their unwavering bond. Wounded and bloodied, he embarks on a journey through the war-torn streets of Helsinki. Despite his battered state, Otami, driven by a determination to reclaim a semblance of normalcy, enters a bank, his hand stained with the remnants of his harrowing ordeal. Drawing the attention of the smartly dressed customers, Otami, in a poignant moment, dumps his hard-earned gold nuggets onto the counter. The onlookers gaze at him in awe and curiosity. Finally, breaking his silence for the first time throughout the movie, he addresses the teller, requesting the exchange of the nuggets for larger band notes. With a weary yet resolute expression, he explains that carrying the band notes would be far less burdensome than the weight of the nuggets he has carried for so long. That's the end of the story.
If you like this video, please subscribe in order to receive notifications for our future uploads.